Having the right HR documentation in place is absolutely vital for making sure that you treat people professionally, fairly, and that you're able to hire the right people into your business. Not having the right things in place could impact your ability to hire. We've seen people who are turning down job offers because the documentation doesn't fit what's being sold to them throughout the recruitment process. Hello, my name's Jennifer, I'm the founder of Silk Helix and we help small businesses with all things HR, people management and employment law. In this video, I'm gonna go through my five key pieces of HR documentation that I think every business should have in place. Number one is employment contracts. You have to, by law, issue a statement of particulars by the end of day one of employment. There is a number of things that this should include and we've got other videos that go into detail about what should be in a contract of employment. But the contract of employment goes a bit further than this statement of particulars that you're legally required to have, and it covers the things that protect you as a business. So for example, deductions from wages clauses need to be signed and agreed to prior to any deduction possibly taking place. So things like loss damage due to negligence, for example, or taking back the holiday that's been overtaken if somebody leaves, that needs to be signed in a contract. So you need to have a contract that protects your business. Maybe it has things like flexibility clauses in there to be able to move location or change people's hours of work. These are really important things to have in that employment contract. And it just sets the scene. It makes it really clear to people that you are professional, you are gonna treat them fairly. You're being really clear in setting out what's expected of them, what their rights and entitlements are, and ensures that the business is protected. Without doubt, that is the one. If you're not gonna do anything else, do that one. Number two then is the employee handbook, which supports the contract of employment. So your contract of employment are the things that you are getting signed agreement to. Your employee handbook is the things that you need to share with them. So legally that might include things like um, policies around maternity, holiday policies, sickness policies, those sorts of things. But it'll also include things that you need as a business, again, to protect the business, things that might change as the business changes. So dress code, for example, or social media policy, IT policy, these sorts of things which set out expectations and are important that people are clear on what it is that you need because it's gonna vary from business to business as to what's relevant to you that isn't relevant somewhere else but also potentially that you may need to deal with if somebody breaches those. But most often people don't. When we've got them set out in writing, it's just really clear. People know what's expected. They don't need to be long. They don't need to be draconian. They just need to be something that sets out what's expected of people. Number three is job descriptions. Now, I'm not a fan of HR for HR's sake, and I don't think job descriptions fit into this category. I know some people hate them. Usually that's because they're badly written, they're taken off the internet, they're borrowed from someone else, and they're not relevant to this job. Job descriptions are very good at setting out the expectations of what's doing well in this job, what good looks like. And when they're written for this role, they're written around expectations, they're not a list of tasks, but they cover really what the outcomes are of those tasks, what's expected in terms of things like communication, teamwork, leadership, all of those kind of soft skills, when the job description encompasses all of those things, so you've got a good round picture of what good looks like in this job and somebody can see what's expected of me if I do this job for use in the recruitment process. I think job descriptions are really useful and absolutely essential for being able to A, recruit people and write good quality adverts, because a job description is not an advert, your advert is separate, but it does feed into that and it is something you can provide people who are interested in the role and also you can use it for performance management, making sure you've got those expectations clearly set and you've got a groundwork for what is expected, kind of the wider things. So it may well be that your targets, for example, are around sales targets, but you may have in your job description much more around the how and the way things are done in the company things like communication with other departments, so teamwork and leadership, those sorts of things. You do need to clearly set out to people what their rights are to time off. So time off policies are really important. These will usually be within an employee handbook. I like them within an employee handbook because when you've got everything together in one place, people know where it is, there's no arguments about, oh, I didn't know that one existed, but you are expected to let people know what their rights to time off are, even if that is just the statutory. So things like your holiday, your sickness, your maternity, paternity, shared parental leave, adoption leave, time off for dependents, all of these statutory rights to leave, 
plus any others that you may give as a company should be detailed and then there should be policies around how you take them holiday for example it's going to vary drastically from company to company how much notice people have to give for holiday in some situations if i go off on holiday tomorrow as long as my work's done and i mean i'm working in a way that i can manage around it it's not going to be a problem to anyone in others where there's rotors and you're looking at needing certain numbers of people to deliver the service, then you're going to need much greater periods of, of notice prior to somebody taking holiday. So you need to make sure that you've got that clearly written in a policy so people can understand exactly what's expected of them so they can take their holiday because they, they want to and they should be able to. And finally, number five is an induction checklist. Now this one often gets missed and this is on my list because getting somebody settled into the job quickly is so important and it has long-term effects for their performance, their retention, their attendance, all of these things if we haven't settled them in well. So having something which sets out as part of the kind of new starter program, the first few weeks, months of the job, these are the things you're gonna to need to learn these are the things that are going to be provided for you. These are the things we're going to organise to make sure that you can get into every system, for example, making sure that you've got all the um, user logins and things set up for somebody, who they're going to meet, why they're going to meet them. All of those things, when they're planned and you've got something that they can clearly see what's happening and when it's going to happen, you can as well, you can check it off, make sure things aren't being forgotten. It's so important to getting somebody settled in quickly and up to speed as quickly as you possibly can, which we all know is crucial because when we've got a vacancy, we've got somebody new coming in, we need to get them in and, and doing the job effectively. So there we have it. That's my five recommendations for the HR documentation you need if you're employing people. If you want us to work on any of these for you, there's details in the description on how to get in touch. In the meantime, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell to continue getting your hints and tips on managing people better.